After Dan moved the batteries and proved the wiring, he started working on connecting the system to the van alternator. That required getting under the hood and doing some modifications and additions, like a relay switch. And that's what today's video is about. Stay tuned. So what's the sol solenoid function? Isolation? There's a, there's a, yeah. When the vehicle is turned off, let's say you're driving someplace, you've been driving for three hours, and you get to where your, your destination is, all of the time that you were driving, the, the vehicle's alternator was charging your house batteries. And now you got to your campsite, you turn the truck off, you turn your van off, now this opens up so that anything mm. that you have running inside of your van isn't going to drain your starting battery. It's now then pulling off of these. It's just pulling off of these. And so this is kind of like an automatic uh, a device to uh, charge your house batteries when you're driving, but separate uh, the, the vehicle battery uh, an alternator from uh, these batteries when you turn the ignition off. Okay, this wire here gets power through this fuse from the, the radio uh, circuit. So if, if the solenoid ever does short out, it should trip this fuse if nothing else, you'll just blow the fuse for the radio. And hmm. then the vehicle, you can still drive it to until you can figure out what's going on. Uh, these two terminals, one gets power, one is ground. And uh, when it gets power, this, this solenoid energizes. It connects this terminal with that terminal. So, and then this wire goes to... Um, uh, the, the vehicle battery so that the vehicle's alternator will charge your house batteries when the ignition system is turned on. So it's coming into this one it and comes, going out there. Yeah. And okay, so now... attaching it here because I don't want to put it on the battery itself to keep uh, this away from the battery acid and fumes. So this connection should stay cl a lot cleaner. Some water. Wire to something and your tie wrap's way too big. Um, you're going to be wasting a lot of this tie wrap. So what you can do is wrap it around a couple of times. And what that does for you is it makes the tie wrap twice as strong. And you don't have all that excess. Makes, yeah. So you're still wasting some, but that tie wrap's twice as strong as it would be. You cut it off right at the edge, huh? Yeah, that way when you're rubbing your hand up against it or whatever, you don't have a sharp edge sticking you. And here's what it looked like when he was done. The car's positive terminal is connected 
to the positive on the relay. The terminal on the left is then connected to the wire that runs to the house battery. While the negative part of that pair is grounded on the chassis. And there's a circuit breaker on the end of this wire, just in case this wire shorts out somewhere, that circuit breaker will trip. And there's also a circuit breaker from your house batteries so that if, if something uh, shorts out, It'll this trip. should trip. And you can manually trip these breakers by pushing that button. And that'll kill all the power to uh, to your. Oh, I think I just turned off your. I just turned off your. Uh, yeah. Cooler. So we'll leave it turned off for a minute. Uh, with those compressors, it's not good to turn them off and then turn mm. them right back on. So we'll let it sit for a little bit. But yeah, you just flip this lever back up, and then uh, it gets juice again. You know, this will get power again. <coughs> so in, now, when if, would you do that? Would you ever need to do that? You would never need to do it. Okay. Well, let's say uh, you were worried about something draining your battery. You're going to park for a long time. Okay. Uh, you're going hiking or something or tent camping and you don't want anything. Or at anything. the airport. You're going to yeah. leave it for a few days. You don't want anything to run all your accessories. Okay. You could trip that and then it would shut off the power to this. But right now, if you were to start the engine, this fuse block would get power through this solenoid. Because the solenoid would energize as soon as you turn the ignition on. Yeah. And that's connected. So if you wanted to completely isolate this, you would do the same thing to the circuit breaker that's up front. You know, if you wanted to drive it like that. If you wanted to turn turn off this auxiliary uh, for some reason charging for some reason, you could. Yeah, you wouldn't. No reason to do no it. No reason to really. But excuse me, the circuit breaker or these uh, fuses are set up so the top half, each one of these terminals, gets power from the fuse next to it, and then all of the common ground terminals are on the bottom here and this is the uh, your house battery ground you make it sound simple it is it's real simple when you turn the key on your, it runs <laughs> your radio uh, circuit gets power this energizes and it connects uh, your house batteries to your uh, vehicle battery Now let's say you left your you've forgotten you left your lights on, or something like that. Mm -hmm. But your house batteries were fully charged. What you could do is just turn the ignition system on and let it sit for 10, 15 minutes, and then and it'll charge the. Then these batteries will charge your vehicle battery. Oh really? Yeah. And you turn it on what way? Just turn the key? Yeah, just so that the radio would play. Oh. Say, yeah. That may come in handy someday. <laughs> that may. Well, you could, you know, always use a set of jumper cables and go from, from these there to there. I thought about that. To there well, to there. you could do that. But as soon as, as soon as the ignition is turned on, this solenoid will close, and they'll connect the two. An open circuit is one in which the electricity is not flowing. You had to find such a critter under there. And then that's what's tapped into the solenoid. This is different for all vehicles. In my situation, he tied it into the radio. Because it only activates when the van's turned on. Get your key on. Once Dan determined that it was the radio current he needed to tap into, it was just a matter then of patching the systems together.
Then there was just one final project. And that's the subject of the next video. And you'll get to meet Nikki, Dan's best friend.